welcome back to the show. Now, it's Fashion Week in New York City right now, and appropriately, my next interview is with Soraya Darabi and Maxine Bida, co-founders of the fashion startup Zadie. Founded in 2012, Zadie is a shopping platform that provides customers with information about conscious consumer movements and conscious consumer merchandise as well. Now, I first asked them to explain the basic mission of Zadie. Here's what they had to say. Zadie's mission is to tackle the fast fashion industry and provide a real alternative. Uh, for every product that is carried on Zadie.com, uh, we're going deep dive into the details of the story so that people can feel connected to their products once again, uh, the same way that this generation uh, is connecting to their food. I'm glad that you bring up food because, you know, the conscious consumer movement has seen substantial growth lately. And, and just as Whole Foods sparked a movement based on the belief that consumers should question where their food come from, comes from, Zadie has done this with fashion. So why the growing demand for sustainable merchandise, do you think? Well, you know, John Mackey, the founder, one of the founders of Whole Foods, coined the term conscious consumerism. And we were raised by people like him, baby boomers, who taught us that sustainability is important. And thus, our generation was raised with awareness. Now that generation is uh, coming into some disposable income, knows that they want to vote. They know that they want to vote with their dollars. And we want to make smarter, more ethical decisions about the products that we put onto our body, just as for two decades now, we've been thoughtful about what we put into our bodies. Now, entrepreneurship is a challenge in any industry, but can you tell the viewers about some of the entrepreneurial hurdles that you both faced in the fashion world? Well, we came as outsiders in this space, and I think there was a, a big learning curve for both of us and, and on the team. But what's been really exciting is from op-eds that we've placed in the business of fashion, the, the whole business community of the fashion industry is opening up. Um, they're excited to see what we're doing, and they're looking to see what we're doing because we're really embracing that next generation consumer. Uh, and so they're looking to us for some guidance on what we can do in, to change the industry down the road. Now, can you tell me what some of the unique challenges are to manufacturing sustainable merchandise? There are too many challenges to list, but we'll try to list a few. First of all, transparency. Until Zadie came along, there weren't brands demanding to understand um, you know, who our workers are when we produce overseas. And so by virtue of that, we're producing this first knit that we're launching um, this holiday season entirely domestically. So we can go to the farms, we can go to the dyeing houses, we can go to the knitting houses and meet the people making our product, ensure that they're being paid fairly for their hard work, and more importantly, making sure that they're producing the garments in a sustainable fashion. They're not just saying, oh, yes, what we're doing is green um, and leaving it at that, but rather we have our own vetting process to ensure that the product that we sell is held to remarkable standards. But the industry in general is cloaked in secrecy, and that's because so much of our manufacturing in the U.S. has been moved predominantly to China, but mostly overseas um, since the 60s. Now, your website says that more than 2.5 million pounds of used clothing ends up in landfills each year. Now, we see uh, recycling with metals, metals like copper and aluminum, and I know that a lot of used clothing bins call it recycling, but is it really recycled? Basically, do you see the potential for a comparable scrap market in the fashion industry? Uh, it's not like a metal, so you're right. Um, there is a, a, <clears throat> a very clear distinction in that when you recycle uh, fabrics and material, you actually can't keep the same quality. So the goal for us is really, it's getting rid of fast fashion altogether. It's going back to beautiful product that you really appreciate, you really want to hold on to, not just for a season and throw it out, uh, but you want to keep it for a lifetime. And that's what we're trying to return to at Zadie. Because when you are, you think you're giving it away, it's actually not being given to people in need. A lot of it is ending up um, in landfills, and that's just not a sustainable future. Now, uh, trends. Trends are very simply an intrinsic part of the fashion world. And fast fashion behemoths like H&M, like Zara, like Uniqlo are happy to fill this demand. So how do you compete in the world of fashion if your brand's intrinsic value lies in not creating superfluous apparel? 
You know, fast fashion and the trend-based fashion cycle is a treadmill, and it's a treadmill that once you get off of, you feel much less exhausted. We believe in timeless classic apparel, things that are meant to be in your closet for years, if not decades, of reverting back to the way our grandparents shopped and not so much the way that we were raised to shop. You know, both Maxine and I were a big part of, of the fast fashion consumer base when H&M first launched in America. We'd go there like everyone else, excited about the deals. But when products fall apart after two, three washes, and you recognize that neon pink is only going to be in style for one season, you begin to realize how silly it is to waste your money on products not meant to last. So what we're doing at Zadie is we're creating an alternative. We're creating a slow fashion brand that emphasizes process and quality. And by doing so, we're giving people an alternative that is much needed in the marketplace. I mean, that sounds pretty good to me as, as not being a super fashion forward lady. I, I like that, that mantra. <laughs> but can you talk to me about outsourcing? Now, apparel, it's still an industry that requires the human hand. So the only way to provide such cheap clothing is by sourcing the lowest quality materials and using only the most basic forms of production. So along with manufacturing, uh, you know, that, that takes place in terrible places in the world where workers' rights and, and livable wages are essentially non-existent. So how is Zadie combating these issues while still staying competitive? Well, we're replacing the model entirely. You know, the, the reason why Rana Plaza collapsed is that no one was looking out for the workers there. Uh, Rana Plaza itself was a shadow factory. Uh, that's a really big, important thing that we're trying to tackle with Zadie, Zadie by creating that transparent supply chain. It's really not just asking for Zadie, but consumers more broadly to ask for all of their clothing. Just where is it coming from? Who is making this stuff? Uh, we're con combating that shadow factory, and we're able to do everything domestically here in the United States. It's something for this sweater that we're incredibly excited and proud about. Uh, and what we're doing, we're selling that product direct to consumer, and we're passing that savings on to the consumer. That was Soraya Darabi and Maxine Badak, co-founders of Zadie. Time now for today's Big Deal.